What's up golfers? Coach Josh here. I have a fantastic warm-up video for you today. So if you get to the golf course and you got five to eight minutes and you don't have enough time to hit balls but you want to get loose, this is what you need to do. I would argue that this is almost even better than actually kind of racing to their practice range, hitting like 15 or 20 shots in a rush and then going back to the first tee or the putting green. So if you got five to seven minutes, this is really going to help tune your body up going to open up those rotary centers it's going to get the blood flowing okay which is all you really need to warm up you can take some some practice swings once you finish this warm up and you should feel loose like you're you already played like two or three holes so if you ever struggle getting to the course late don't have don't have enough time to hit balls but you want to do something to warm up i got you covered so we're going to start with your golf club i was going to have that Take, take your wedge, which is probably one of your heavier golf clubs, and hold it near the bottom of the grip. We're going to do what we call wrist 180s. So we're going to go 180 degrees with the club head, right? maybe just a little past parallel to ground with the shaft, as much as you can do without the grip coming out of your hands. I don't want it to come out of your grip there. Keep a secure grip on it back and forth. I'm not trying to do it fast, just nice and steady. Think of a slow metronome. You're going to do eight of these on each side. So what it's going to do is it's going to totally kind of get the muscles in and around the hands and the wrists and elbows warmed up, used to grabbing something, used to rotating, okay, so that we can use those muscles in the swing, all right, and you're actually starting to get those muscles in the hands and forearms, wrists and elbows, getting those joints moving, all right, so we're going to start there. Again, eight on each side should be plenty, all right, so nice and smooth back and forth with those wrist 180s. Next thing we're going to do is move down the chain, so we're going to do what's called our shoulder cars. So you don't need a wall beside you for this, just focus on keeping your chest nice and square, your feet planted. So without moving the trunk a lot, you're going to make as big a circle as you can, okay? So try not to have the arm way out to the side. The bigger the circle I can make, if you imagine a wall right beside you, and you're trying not to touch that wall, that's what you're going to do. It's going to force you to use the muscles behind that shoulder blade to reach back. Okay, we want to get those muscles waking up. You do five in one direction and then you're going to switch directions. Keep the head tall so we're not ducking underneath here. We want to also start to reinforce good posture. If you've been sitting at your desk and then driven to the golf course, you might be doing it like this. We don't want that. We want you nice and tall, head back, and starting to turn that hand back, squeeze the shoulder blade to bring that arm around in the circle and then we just switch sides, right? Nice and tall through the chest. You're gonna do five each direction. Again, head stays nice and tall. Open the chest up, take a few deep breaths here, and then switch directions, okay? So those are our, our shoulder cars. Car just stands for controlled articular rotation or range in the joint. The shoulder joint should be the most mobile joint in the body. The very loose ball and socket joint. So we're getting those muscles around there warmed up. Again, not trying to do it super fast, just getting the blood flowing. You should feel those shoulders warm up. Next, we're just going to do some neck rotations. Keep that chest square. Look to the side as far as you can until your head stops and then over to the other side. Big breath in. Try and go maybe a little further each time. Make sure your chest is not rotating. We're just getting the head rotating. Again, we need that neck to be able to rotate, especially towards your lead shoulder effectively because in the bottom, if I rotate my neck to the lead side and I get into my golf posture and turn, that's what I need to be able to keep my eye on the golf ball. So if you've got a stiff neck, it's going to be hard to make a full turn and keep your eye on the ball and you might come out of posture. So make sure you warm that up. Okay, nice and slow, hold it at the end range, go back to the other side. Breathing through this, five to six each side is going to be plenty. All right, so we got the kind of the upper extremities and head and neck warmed up. If you're liking this so far, give us a give us a subscribe. That helps us out a lot. All right, back into the warm up. All we're going to do now is get the T spine or your trunk warmed up. This is my favorite one to do on the range. All right, because we don't have time to get down into the under the do a book opener. So we're going to do what's called an A frame. We can do it standing. So I'm going to take my shoulder width stance, make like an A-frame with my elbow and, and fist right here just above my knees. So I'm bracing that elbow here and here. And then I'm going to let this arm just hang between my legs like so and pack the shoulders down. You'll notice from the side here, I'm not slouching like this. I'm actually pushing against my legs to pull that shoulder blade down away from the ears and lengthen the spine. So feel like you're sticking your butt out 
and pushing your chest out so your spine's nice and tall. Once you're in that position, stable through here, there's gonna be zero movement at the legs. I'm pushing those feet into the ground. I'm gonna rotate and look towards my hand as I breathe out. Hold it at the end range for a second and rotate a little further without moving the legs. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and breathe out as you get to the top. Make sure you find that end range and you're gonna do about six to eight of these each side. As I do it this way, you'll see when you, if I'm gonna to rotate to my left, the tendency is gonna be for my opposite knee to, to sort of, or sorry, my same side knee to straighten out. You'll see here as I turn, this knee might wanna straighten. So that's why I said keep the legs really stable. So we're reinforcing, pushing into the ground with your legs and getting that rotation. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, make sure your head doesn't stay down here. Again, you've been sitting at your desk all day, you've probably been a little bit like this. When we're doing this, if I turn, that's as far as I can turn. If I get my head back, open the chest, like I said before, now that my posture is better, I can actually turn more. If my head's like this, it's gonna bring me out of that turn. So getting the head back, open it up, and twist. Again, six to eight on each side, all right? Next one is a lunge and twist. Again, body should be starting to get warm now. You're gonna hold the golf club, step forward down into your lunge, press the club out in front of you, and feel like you're pulling apart with the hands. That's gonna engage your shoulders and rotate towards that front leg. And then step back, step out. And you're gonna bring it out, press and turn. Again, pulling apart with the hands. Step back, get down into your lunge, balance first, and rotate. Come back. Again, you're gonna do about five or six of these on each side. Make sure you get down into that lunge as low as you comfortably can. Press out, pull apart on the handles, that'll engage the shoulders, and then rotate the trunk. Make sure the center of this club or shaft stays even with the chest. So the arms and chest, you're trying to get turning together. I'm not just bending the arms and doing this. You're actually moving your chest. So again, that's a pro tip. Keep that center of the shaft in line with the center of the chest to get a wide turn. Those are your um, lunge and twists. Now we're gonna go to a hip car. So you actually might wanna have that club for balance. And all you're gonna do is bring this leg up and try and rotate. You're gonna bring this knee out to the side and then try and rotate that ankle out. So I'm internally rotating the hip bring it back to the front. So I'm going here, rotate, or bring the leg out to the side, and then turn that knee down and in, bring it back in. So we're out, rotate the hip, bring it out. So I'm using those muscles all around this hip, cuff, to rotate it. You're gonna do six of these on each side. Bring it out, I'm using the muscles here in the hip, and internally rotate six times on each side. Use something for balance, again, bring it out. We need that internal rotation as golfers to be able to load into the trail side and then unload and post up on your lead side. So I really feel these muscles all around here lifting up. Again, if you want a wall for balance or a golf cart, that's fine. Bring the leg out to the side and then internally rotate. So think about turning your top thigh down towards the floor but keeping the knee up high. So those are your hip cars. Last couple here, we got some ankle rolls. If you want to use this for balance, that's fine. Just gonna make some circles, okay? With the foot and ankle. Gonna do about eight to 10 in each direction. Making a big circle, okay? We need to have good ankle mobility so you can post up onto that lead leg and keep your balance. Again, both directions make as big a circle as you can if that if that circle feels like it's more of a square or it's not really moving that well, go slowly through it and really try and get that foot moving around in that big circle as much as you can with those ankle circles. And then the last one, now that we've gotten head to toe pretty much warm, I'm really feeling like I'm loose. The T-swing, this is one of my favorites. From here, I've got the legs pushing into the ground. Get not totally down to my golf posture yet. I've just got my hands out in front of the chest. I'm swinging that arm back. Head stays straight ahead, and I'm pushing into the ground, swinging the shoulder back, 
keeping the head steady. So I feel a dynamic stretch in the chest and shoulder, and you're getting a little bit of torso rotation, but it's more dynamic now. After you do about five or six of those at this height, go ahead and move down into your golf posture, and same thing. And you'll notice I'm not doing this, which is just me reaching my arm back. I'm actually turning the chest. So then the arm just flows back, and I'm not just reaching with the arms like this. We're turning the chest, turning the chest, making it more dynamic. Again, once you're down in golf posture like this, five or six each side, and now you're ready to hit the links, you're warmed up. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Loved working with you today. If you like that content, again, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.